Hi everyone, I am so excited to be able to bring this super requested <laughs> um, live and informational training to you guys and have this at your fingertips. So I have the honor of introducing the beautiful Latoya to you guys. We got to meet um, virtually, what was it Latoya, a couple months ago when you were hosting a meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and so I had found her in this amazing um, local Kansas City women's group that is a networking group, and she was hosting an event, and um, one of the headlines was the subject about vaginal feeding. Yes, and yes. So, yes. Lotus, honey, if you don't mind just pushing that mute button for me, sweetheart. Um, and so um, we were super excited to, like, partner up, and then I don't remember what happened, and then we ended up um, actually meeting people at the gym show, and yeah. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, Latoya, I'm going to have you just kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do, and then we'll dive into learning more about vaginal steaming. Okay, I am Latoya Adams. Uh, I um, educate people on vaginal steaming which is also called Yoni Steaming. Um, it's been around for decades, hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's just now becoming more popular again because women are getting more into self-care uh, and taking care of themselves holistically, as well as still going to the doctor and, and making sure that everything is still operating correctly. Um, I uh, started steaming about two years ago uh, because I had my own issues. And granted, uh, we as women, we don't talk about it. Um, you tend to just don't say anything, don't share anything, just it is what it is. Um, so um, years ago, I had fibroids and cysts. Uh, I do have two kids and they, um, the deliveries themselves were just very extreme. And so after I had my kids, I should have started steaming then because it is good for after having childbirth. Um, and so when the last doctor's appointment that I had almost three years ago, she uh, really, she did every test under the sun, uh, test that if I could not conceive, she did that test and things of that nature. And so the last appointment that I had with her, and I was 38 years old, and she says to me, um, you uh, can have a hysterectomy. And I was like, I'm 38. Who wants a hysterectomy at 38 if I don't need it? You can't tell me what's wrong with me, but you're offering a surgery to me that is very extreme. Um, and so from there on, I said, okay, it has to be a better way. And so I started doing research and I found uh, Yoni Steaming and um, I taught myself how to do it. Um, I uh, educated myself on the herbs. Uh, I, edu I educated myself beyond the herbs because it's just more than the herbs. Uh, your affirmations come into play. Your meditation comes into play. Just, uh, and your healthy eating comes into play. I'm a pescatarian and I have been for a very long time. And that plays a, a big part on the way that I live. Not eating the chicken, not eating the pork and making sure that the food that I do eat is right and healthy and good for me. Um, and so for the last couple years, I really dove into Yoni Steaming and women's health. And so in September, we did a conference, uh, basically a Yoni Steam conference, but it also built on mental health and spiritual health, because mm -hmm. those also come into play as well. You can't have one without having the other. And uh, just educating women that you can still be a mom, still be a wife, and still do all the things you want to and still take care of yourself. Self-care is not being selfish at all. Um, and so we did that conference in September, which will actually, our next one will be next year around the same time. Um, and it was very, very, very well received. And then you learn a lot about other women that have either the same problems or even worse than what you have. 
And so that, that conference was a eye opener. So then it had me go to the next level, which was being able to educate people beyond the conference on the herbs, on the bath salts that we had, um, being able to teach them how to do a bath and being able to teach them how to do affirmations, how to meditate during your steaming session, um, to tell them that even though you had a hysterectomy, you still can do the yoni steaming because it goes beyond the womb. It goes to the digestive system as well. And the wow. herbs that are combined for you, see, I'm not, I'm not using the same herbs that my girl over here use. I'm using the herbs <laughs> that are made for me. The blend is for me. And so that, that, uh, and just knowing what, what things are going on with your body and how to take care of them. And so that's just basically what, what I do, what I do. Yeah. Girl, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So tell me a little bit more as far as when, when should a woman or why, right? But both of those questions, when and why should she vaginally steam? And what does that mean? When people hear the word steam, they instantly get nervous. A lot of us channel our inner retail days <laughs> when back <laughs> all around that steamer, honey, and you had to steam press the shirts and it would burn the heck out of your hands. And so when you think of your private sacred yoni and this delicate skin, and then you think steam, oh my God, am I going to burn her? Right? Yeah. Explain to me why should we do this um, if we maybe don't have quote quote health problems or what why is it important to the woman's health that we make this a regular habit and how often should we do this? Okay, uh, the why. Um, even if you don't have the fibroids or the cysts, just the cleaning the lining of the uterus uh, is a good thing. Uh, just getting that old blood out of there and releasing that is a good thing. Uh, some people even, uh, their cycles are dark in color and which it should not be. The, the color of your cycle should be bright red. Um, the, the brighter it is, the better it is, the more that you know that your uh, yoni is being well taken care of. Uh, the dark dry blood tends to mean that there's something going on. Um, the, as often as you can do it is, uh, we tend to tell people no more than four times a month. So you could do it once a, once a week for 30 minutes and uh, with whatever herb mixture that you make up for yourself. Um, and the herbs range from mugwort to calendula to rosemary to basil. Um, and they all have their different uh, properties that can help whatever you're dealing with. Um, we tend to say, I usually say, no, don't do it. Do it three days before your cycle starts and three days after your cycle start if you're doing it once a month. Um, anything times four, I think, is too many because then you can start to alter how your cycle uh, flows. So you can actually... Uh, cut your cycle down, meaning if you go 20, start in 21 days or 28 days, you can cut it down by doing the steaming too much. Um, it is helpful, it is beneficial, but you wanna do it in moderation, just like anything, you wanna do it in moderation. So what benefits, like let's say I struggle with my pH balance and my hormones or I struggle with smells down there, right? And it's something I'm super self-conscious about. Is this something that will help me? Yes, and then also with the smells, um, keep in mind anything that you put in your mouth, anything that you eat comes out. Um, so if, you're if you have reoccurring yeast infection, um, you have to be mindful that your sugar intake is probably way too high. Um, a uh, little something about me. <laughs> I am a big sweets person. Cake. Pecan. I'm becoming one. Like I can't get enough chocolate lately. <laughs> I'm keep the Popeye's chicken. I want the chocolate. <laughs> I mean, I, I love sweets. 
And so I remember uh, about a year or so ago, I just had, I kept having yeast infection after yeast infection after yeast infection. And so what you do is you go to your doctor and you say, I'm having another yeast infection. And she, she, our doctor is wonderful. Dr. Monfort, a uh, little English lady. She was like, what are you eating? What are you drinking? And I wrote it all down and she looked at me and she was like, are you crazy? And I was like, what, what? I drink, at that time I was drinking three large sweet teas from McDonald's a day. Not a week, a day. And so all that sugar was manifesting and it was causing me to have yeast infection. And so she was like, cut it out. And so now that we did the 14 day no sugar with Nicole, I mean, I was like, at the first three days, I was like <laughs> going crazy, trying to want that. I wanted that sugar. And it just is that whatever you put in your mouth can affect your body in so many ways. So the smells is probably something you've eaten uh, that you continue to eat that don't balance with your pH. Um, and then you go back to the yeast infections. Something doesn't balance with your pH. Uh, I tell people, uh, I've been a licensed hairstylist for over 20 years. And people come and they say, oh, my hair is breaking and da, da, da. Even though you're doing the regimen that I sent you home with, it has nothing, it can't help you unless I know what you're, what you're intaking, what medicines you're on. Uh, how often do you eat a day? What are you eating? Are you getting the right amount of water intake? Um, I have a lady now who we're helping for her thinning hair. And I've had her for about a year. Her hair is growing back. Her hair is healthy. Her hair is full. But we cut her back on um, what she was eating. And then we ramped up her water intake because she was only drinking like one bottle of water a day. And the rest was pop, juice, and other stuff. And so we cut that all back, and then that helped that. So anything, just remember, anything you put in your mouth, it comes out throughout your body. It affects everything. You know, the Bible says your body is a temple. And that is so, so true. If you don't take care of it, it will not take care of you. Yes, I couldn't agree more. So speaking of having a temple and having something take care of you, right? That brings me to the next topic as we move on a little bit more. So spiritually, what can this do for me if, let's say, hypothetically, because I'm gonna, we're going to explain the process a little bit so that you all don't have this visualization <laughs> that you're outside and you're doing squats over this... <laughs> funky temple thing. I want to explain the process and a little bit of how this works and how it's actually very relaxing and a spiritual experience. But I want you to kind of go into spiritually what this does for you to connect to your yoni and how mm -hmm. important it is that women learn to, that we are um, many parts, right, of our body and they all have beautiful functions. And when we allow ourselves to become disconnected to these parts because of sexual trauma or past lovers or yeah. bitterness, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, right? Um, this affects us not only emotionally, but spiritually as well. And it creates this disconnection because we begin to void loving these parts of us, honoring these parts of us. So let's talk a little bit about the spiritual connection of what this does. And then move on a little bit about emotionally what this can do to you if you're someone who is experiencing getting over that past lover. Or the um, I'm going to even go a little bit beyond that. I was hoping you go deep, girl. You can go deep. <laughs> I don't want to get too deep because I don't want to. <laughs> you what? What'd you say? I said, I don't want to get too deep because it might, it might make some people run. Oh, how to be blunt. Be blunt. Okay. okay. So I want to go beyond us, beyond you. Um, your womb is connected with your mother, your grandmother, and your great grandmother. Everything that they went through, you are going to go through. And so uh, going back to women not speaking or uh, sharing what happens to them and 
and the issues that they have, um, you tend to, uh, I talked to my mother and growing up, my mother, uh, I call her herbalist because in our house growing up, you had a cabinet in the kitchen that was nothing but it had three shelves and it was full of herbs. Anything and everything that you can think of, she had. And so going to the doctor was not a thing. It was, oh, you have a headache. Oh, I have a tea for that. Oh, you're having cramps. Oh, I have a tea for that. Oh, you have a ear, ear infection. I have a tea for that. And so it's just amazing how spiritually your mother, your grandmother, and you are all connected uh, just by your womb. So the issues they have, you have as well. Um, and you can break that. The yoni steaming can break that. So educate yourself about your womb. Every womb is different. Um, there's a womb massage that you can do. And uh, when I can't, it goes into a triangle shape. And you can feel your womb and you can tell where it ends and where it begins. Um, you can massage it, do the massaging with oil. Um, spiritually, you can some we are not connected enough to our wounds um and once you get connected you will know her a little better you will understand her a little better you'll appreciate her a little better and once you do that she will benefit you um and what i mean by that is you have the heavy periods the cramps that last forever your cycle should not be your enemy and right now, I think a lot of women, their cycles are their enemies. And once you connect with her and get to know her and understand her and treat her a little better, she will benefit you. You will not have the heavy cycles. You will not have the long days of period. You will not have uh, the heavy cramps. All that will subside. I went from having cramps. Uh, I had cramps one week before my cycle. So I knew for a whole week that she was coming. And then when she came, I was on it for 10 days, 10 days. I bled heavy for three of those 10 days. And then the other days it kind of subsided, subsided, subsided. And then it's like, she almost went away on day seven. And then it was like, she came back full force again for three more days. And so you're like, okay. And so once I started to understand her and get to know her a little better, she started to change. And so I have four days now. Uh, I don't cramp before, but I have a calendar where I know she's coming. So I prepare myself. I do my steaming three days before. So when I do have that flow, everything that needs to come out is coming out together. It's not coming out in, in uh, blood clots. I don't have those anymore. They used to be the size of a golf ball. And they would last for every, every single time for three days, blood clot, blood clot, blood clot. And so then you say to yourself, okay, if, if I can do this, and then I can teach other women to do this, to understand her, to love her, to she will benefit you. Uh, and that's what it's all about, knowing your body, understanding your body. Um, making sure that you take care of it, making sure that you eat the right things, making sure that you do the right things. Um, I do a lot of tea drinking. I drink tea in the morning. Uh, it's called a morning energy tea. I drink that in the morning and throughout the day, I'm still drinking tea. Uh, at night before I go to bed, I drink tea. Tea is very beneficial. Um, your water intake is very beneficial. Um, your water intake, depending on your weight, and then uh, dividing that and seeing how many bottles of water you need to drink a day. Uh, eight bottles of water, 16 ounces, is a very good start uh, to flush the organs, to uh, make sure that nothing is manifesting inside of you that don't need to. Um, now that I've cut back all my sugar, uh, I haven't had a sweet tea in a very long time, so I don't even think I'm going to go back to that. Um, that McDonald's tea is, is the devil. Really, it is. <laughs> and it will have you in an addiction <laughs> that you should not have. But now that I don't drink that anymore and I'm drinking my herbal tea, a lot of things flow differently. Um, my mind is not clogged. I feel that when you drink uh, when you drink too much sweet stuff, it clogs the brain a little bit. And now things can manifest. Ideas can come and and 
bring forth themselves. Uh, so it's just, it's spiritually, you have to know her. You have to understand her and she will treat you better. She will treat you better. Yes. And so I love that. So just getting connected to her. I love how you mentioned different ways you can even learn how to do the massage, how this will also help improve your cycles um, and just get you connected back to you and learning more about you. So let me ask this. Um, as someone who also experiences blood clots, why is this not normal? Why are heavy cycles not necessarily a thing that we should just accept? What is our body trying to tell us when this happens? When it happens, mainly our body is trying to tell us that something is going on. Um, I don't say don't go to the doctor. But do your yearly checkups, uh, do your yearly tests. Um, I know for me personally that I was getting, when I was getting all those tests done, my fibroids would uh, move from one side to the other, like they were bust. So I was getting tests done every month. And so in the process of that, it was like, I could tell when a fibroid had busted. It was the most painful thing that I've ever experienced. And I've had a kid. My first child was uh, vaginal with no meds, none whatsoever. And I ripped. So, I mean, I know what pain is. And that was worse than that. Um, when you're having the blood clots, that's just, that just means that uh, the lining needs to be cleaned. Um, there is... Uh, teas for that as well. So like the yoni steaming uh, herbs that uh, I sent Marcia, you can actually take those and make those into an infused tea. So not only can you steam with it, you can also drink it. So you would take that those herbs, do your hot water, pour it over the herbs, and let it sit for five to ten minutes. Now if you want it to be even more potent, you would take it and let it steep for 30 to five hours, 30 minutes to five hours, or even overnight, and then drink it the next day. Um, all those are good things to have, good things to do. Um, when you do the steaming, it also helps to get yourself regulated and it'll stop you from having that heavy flow, the blood uh, clots and everything like that. Um, we, I recommend that when you do that, start off slow with two a month. So then you can get yourself regular. And then once you do that, you can just start backing off. So you can do, go back to one a month and then go from there. That's awesome. So what is it about the steaming and what is it about these herbs that help the woman heal and help the Oni heal? What is it that is making work? Okay, so the herbs, you have so many different ones that you can use and combine. Um, so the top three that I would say would be raspberry leaf. It's a wound tonic, uh, good for toning and aiding infertility. And it helps symptoms for your menstrual cramps, your PMS, your endometriosis. And it's helpful for uh, a couple trying to conceive. Um, so that's one. Uh, the red clover is high in protein, vitamins and minerals, uh, absorbs calcium and magnesium, important for smooth uh, muscle function. And then you have the one that everybody kind of goes to is uh, the rose petals are gentle in the stringent tissues of the genitals. Uh, rose is relaxing and uplifting herb. Um, and then another one that I really like is the lavender. Lavender you can use in, in your steaming as well. Um, it calms the mind and the body. Uh, it's nourishing the nervous system. Uh, it's healthy uh, in the uterine function. Um, and then another one is mugwort. Mugwort is usually used for fertility uh, with helping with conceiving. Um, so you have all these herbs and you combine all these herbs and then, uh, Every herb has a different benefit. So I would combine at least three herbs to begin with because you want to you combine them in odd numbers. 
Uh, so three and five are good numbers to go with. Um, the one that I use just for a basic steaming has five herbs in it. Um, and, uh, ooh, calendula is another one. I always, when I go pick up my calendula, <laughs> the guy at the herb store he was like oh you're here for your calendula it was like it's a, it sounds like an aphrodisiac it does sound like <laughs> like every time i go he's like oh your calendula is that what you're picking up today and i'm like yes yes i am <laughs> so and then just uh taking your herbs and and giving the herbs an affirmation. Um, anytime I deal with my herbs or my bath salt, I'm wearing gloves. I make sure that my area is cleansed. I make sure that my mind is right. I make sure that I'm in a happy place because all the, vib the vibrations from me can go to those herbs. And you don't want that. You don't want to send anybody a quote unquote bad batch. Um, so I make sure that I take care of the herbs because I know that whatever this, these herbs are for is to benefit a woman, to make her healthier, make her happier. So that's, that's, yeah, that's it. That's amazing. So let's, I'm going to dive into asking about, let's say that there is someone who is trying to get rid of not get rid of, but trying to heal, okay, from their past partner, and they're trying to heal from the sexual trauma. Now, if they're using your products, or let's say they even create their own at home, okay, mm -hmm. what is it that they can do to help aid in this healing? Because yes, the herbs and the aroma of the herbs are gonna do things for their body. But you know as well as I do, as just you, as you just stated, the intention setting and the affirmations are what really put it into play. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you should that you suggest that someone could do to make this a very spiritual experience if they're trying to really heal from that trauma? Right? What yeah. could they do? Are there also special herbs they could use as well? I would say uh, start with the spiritual aspect of it. Uh, as well as the mental aspect of it. But even before you're steaming and you know that that's what your purpose is, um, making sure that you uh, bring those to light. Um, I find that we hold a lot of stuff. Our womb holds a lot of stuff. And uh, every partner that you're with is still in your womb. I know that's kind of mind blowing, but it's true. And so yeah, I teach that too. Tell them how long, do you know how long that energy stays? It stays until you release it. <laughs> and I teach my clients that a kiss, because I learned this from my coach, a kiss, uh -huh. one kiss, one kiss can stay on your lips for seven years, the energy <laughs> of that partner, seven <laughs> years. So Latoya just told us that the energy of sharing that intimacy with another person, doesn't matter if it's male or female, that energy stays in you for how long, Latoya? As long until you release it. Um, we are receivers. We receive everything. We suck up everything. And um, I think people don't know that about our bodies, that we, we take in, we take in, we take in, we take in. We're nurturers. Every one of us are nurturers in some type of way. Uh, even if you don't want to acknowledge that, that's how we were made up. We are nurturers. So everything that comes our way, we're, we're sucking it in, we're sucking it in, we're sucking it in. So regardless of how many partners I've had, it's my responsibility to, to release them. Because if you don't, they will stay. They will stay. They will continue to manifest in you. They will you know, they, they will live, they will live there. Um, so first off, you need to acknowledge that, that you, that you are wanting to release them. You're wanting to get rid of them so that you can start fresh. Um, once you do that, and then you can say, okay, well, what are the issues that I'm dealing with? Am I dealing with fibroids? Am I dealing with cysts? Am I dealing with anything? I just want to be able to meditate and have a steam and then turn around and have a spiritual bath. That's okay. 
If you don't have any problems, that's okay. If you had a hysterectomy, that's okay. You can still steam. Um, steaming goes beyond steaming. It's spiritual uh, and doing the meditation while I started uh, meditating a little over a year ago. And when I started doing that with my steaming, it actually enhanced that steaming. And so I can tell when I've done it in my mind and to, to me, what to me feels like I've done it correctly. Um, I feel relaxed. I feel released. I feel relieved uh, after I've done it. And so just sitting there clearing your mind and, and thinking of the affirmations in your mind, I am, uh, um, and things of that nature, it just helps. It helps spiritually. Um, and it connects you with yourself. You get to know yourself a little bit better. Um, I always say <laughs> the lady, the, when, the 18 year old that I knew then, if I knew her, the person that I know now, if I knew when I was 18, man, I would be one <laughs> bad chick. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing when you do it and, and you do it with a purpose, have a purpose about it. Don't just do it because you want to do it. And it's the new end thing. Have a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, it'll benefit you more if you have a purpose. So, yeah. Yes. And so with that being said, when you go, when we talk about, right, healing the energy of the past lover, and some of these are not even lovers right? Exactly. Um, healing the energy of anyone who's entered you. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you to go back and to relive this trauma. Exactly. What we're telling you is to go back and help heal yourself of where you're still stuck in this trauma. Exactly. So while you're going through this and you're saying these affirmations, and this can be, we understand this can be really painful to relive some of these memories. That's not what we're asking you to do. I don't want you to feel that you need to do that. Mm -hmm. However, when you're doing these affirmations, you can have that conversation, like she said, with the I am. I am healed. I am letting go. I am forgiving myself for still holding on to this. Whatever it is, when you say that and you're sitting over this sacred spiritual bath that was created for you and your yoni, okay? Yeah. There's going to be a releasing that not only comes from your yoni, but comes from your eyes, from your heart, from your soul. Yeah. And it's something that you just need to let go of so that you can move on. And that not only are you not carrying this energy anymore in you, but you're not bringing it into your next relationship. Yes, yeah. right? exactly. So what, ha what also happens is that sometimes when we have this energy from our past lovers, okay, Leah has some days, I always joke around and say, I have my whole days, okay? I, I've been single off and on for 10 years. <laughs> Victoria's like, me too, boo. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed. I've had some joy in those whole days. But with that, right, um, there's times where I find myself exhibiting these behaviors of these past lovers. And I'm understanding that it's because as we talk about the importance of cord cutting or cord removal and removing that attachment from other people, sometimes we don't talk about the vaginal attachment. Yes. Right? Yes. There's, a, there's an attachment, honey, when someone makes your orgasm. Okay. So, <laughs> and even when they don't, even a dry hump is an attachment. <laughs> so you have to be willing if you're doing the spiritual work to remove all these soul attachments, yeah. you also have to understand that you need to remove the vaginal attachments. Yes. So when people are doing this Yoni, let's walk them through this Yoni uh, cleansing and, and experience. Walk them through how this works because a lot of people have this image of this <laughs> prehistoric days where they <laughs> sat break and they squatted. And they're doing higher, higher. Tell them <laughs> how this works and what this experience is like. Because what's really cool about what you do is there's many things, but you offer this where they do this at home, right? So yeah. no one else is around. They're in a cute little robe. 
explain to them how they do this. Okay, so depending on what you're trying to work through, uh, will determine what herbs that we will uh, combine for you. So we will go with uh, talking about what's going on with you and what uh, you need help with. And so after we do that, we prepare your herbs and we have the water uh, ready for you to steam. Uh, add the herbs, let it sit for about five to 10 minutes before you get over it to steam. It's not, you're not gonna sit close to it. You wanna sit uh, a couple feet away from it. Um, so that uh, you can feel it. You don't want to. You don't want it to be on top of you. Uh, you want to be just far enough to where the steam can penetrate the front and the back. Um, and then, as you're sitting, I usually teach people uh, when they're sitting um, to clear your mind and to uh, have affirmations that you want to talk about. Um, and to be able to meditate. Um, if you don't know how to meditate, I will teach you how to meditate while you're steaming. Um, the closing of the eyes, the breathing in and out, how to breathe properly, because there is a way to breathe, to inhale and exhale. Um, and as you're inhaling and exhaling, you inhaling your good affirmations and then the exhaling of the negative. Um, and then be able to do that. And doing that for 30 minutes, um, clearing your mind, doing your affirmations, doing your breathing uh, act, uh, exercises, and making sure that you're connecting with your room to make sure that you're getting out of it what you're looking for. Um, and once you do that and you've done it once, it's usually just, uh, it's a continuous thing where you, where you tend to want more and you want to do it more and you want to receive more. Um, that's a good start um, to be able to uh, open up yourself and release the things that no longer should be living, being a host in your home. Uh, so that's, that's the beginning of it. Uh, just teaching people how to do it, um, teaching people the right way to do it, because I've heard some people do it and say, oh, I don't, I don't get anything out of it. I've done it once and it is what it is. And I'm like, oh, well, you didn't do it right then. Because um, you should be able to uh, feel something after you're done. You should be able to feel that you have released something and that you're going to receive something, some good stuff, some good, good, good stuff. Girl, don't promise too good. You're going to have all kinds of orders. Look okay. <laughs> So am I sitting, am I squatting over a boiling pot and I'm, 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 I'm frying my vagina? No, you are not frying her. <laughs> Explain to him, boo, you already okay. have. So if you're you doing it at home, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, like the old school sits bath, uh, you can do it that way. Or you can do it, a couple women I have, they do it with a uh, stainless steel pot. So they have the stainless steel pot. They're uh, warming their water up. They're using it, uh, putting their herbs in it, and they're putting it in this stainless steel pot. And so basically they're squatting over it. A good way to squat over it is if you're doing it in your bedroom, um, uh, having your arms on your bed and then squatting over it, not too close to it, a couple of feet above it. And that helps um, just to sit in that squatting position uh for a good 30 minutes uh that's one way to do it uh i've done it uh over the tub so basically i'm got the same technique as when you're on the bed doing it over the tub because after i steam i basically get in my spiritual bath so i'm steaming for my 30 minutes because uh and i have my candles lit and i have my blue sage going and my bath is already ready. So when I've done my 30 minutes of steaming, I'm just jumping in my bath for another 30 minutes. So this is an hour. I usually set aside an hour and a half just for all of this. Uh, and then being able to uh, relax afterwards because you don't want to steam and then go run errands. You have to I, I tell people to make a day of this. So go to work, do all your errands in the beginning of the day. And you know that last part of the day is for you. 
Um, my kids know don't come to the bathroom. My husband know don't come to the bathroom. That's my me time. Um, and so, yeah, I'll take, I'll get everything prepared. My bathroom, I cleanse my bathroom because I know that's my area that I'm going to release some things. So I cleanse my bathroom very, 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 very good. Uh, I prepare all my things. My sage is burning. My two white candles are right at the end of my tub. Um, and then I squat over my stainless steel pot with my herbs in it for 30 minutes. And then I turn around and I get in my bath with my uh, bath salts, my lavender and rose bath salts. And I stay in there for 30 minutes and I'm still doing my affirmations <clears throat> and I'm still doing my meditation breathing. And then after that, I'm done. I, uh, and then I get ready for the night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I get ready for the night. And um, after that, I know that I've done what I needed to do for my self-care for that day. So I do that uh, once, once. <laughs> my husband, I do that. <laughs> I do the, the spiritual bath once a week. And then uh, now I do my steaming uh, twice a month. <laughs> But yeah, it'd be like, oh, I know which days those are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's beautiful. I love that you go in, you sage the space, you cleanse it, but you also make sure that it's clean. The bathtub is clean yes. before you yes. get in there and you have this sacred experience. And I love that you give an option there. If, if you don't have, not all of us have these, you know, Venus and Serena thighs that we can squat over a bowl for 30 minutes. So to be able to have that bathtub as support or the bed or things like that is great tips there too. I like that. I um, mean, there's also all kinds of different um, positions that, you know, if you might have health concerns where you can't squat per se, there's other alternatives. I'm sure Latoya would be able to tell you privately, um, but also on YouTube for people that can't necessarily just squat over a huge pot. Now, I know what, you th what you're thinking, like, oh, my God, I'm going to use the pasta pot for my vagina. So <laughs> understand that you can go get a pot that's your sacred pot, okay? Now, my son already knows that one of our pasta pot cleanses. <laughs> he found my yoni egg in there and thought it was a rare uh, black egg. He was so excited. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> And then he pulled it out and like, oh my God, mom. <laughs> you don't even know what I do when your dad when you're on your visits with your dad. Put it back in the pot. <laughs> it's black like my soul. No. But anyway, so um you can have a sacred sacred pot if you want. Or you can go to oh, yeah. a thrift store if you want and get one and then make sure you cleanse it and purify it yeah. first because it's just something yeah. you're sitting over. So I love that you also combine it with the sacred bath and that you continue to make this date with yourself. Oftentimes we make our vagina pretty, right? We make our yoni beautiful for a date. We go and we get our landscape done. Yeah. Some of us even put jewels on her, right? And we do all these things to make her pretty for someone else. But I love that you're having a date with your vagina to just get to know her and help her heal and talk to her and just spend time with her because she literally is life, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is a beautiful day. I know we're all thinking shit an hour and a half, but I don't know about you. How many times have you wished your partner would spend an hour and a half down there? So it would be the you, best hour and a half that you've ever had. Right. Well, I'm about <laughs> to get the best. So Tell them how they can get these herbs from you and a little bit about your sacred bath experience. I know Latoya is so sweet. She's actually on out of town, kind of on a vacation right now and took time to do this. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but can you explain um, a little bit about your sacred bath experience, how they can get that from you and then how you customize these Joni baths for them? Because I think that's what's so cool. Not only is it a Yoni steam they can purchase, this is one that is personally for them and what they're yes. going and I've never heard of anyone doing that before yeah so um the herbs for steaming uh you can purchase those from me as well as the bath salt 
um, you can uh, DM me on my personal page, uh, Latoya Wooten Adams, or you can DM me on my business page, The Sweet Life Salon. And uh, we'll put those in um, the comments on uh, the link from what you did for the Zoom class. Uh, we'll do that. I'll put those in there. But uh, the Yoni Herbs, uh, we usually talk about what's uh, going on with you, what are you trying to help, things of that nature. And then we make um, a herb uh, recipe, I like to call it, just for you. Um, and then the bath salts, uh, the lavender and rose. Um, I've been. Uh, <laughs> see, oh I got, my God! You guys I found a penny today. So <laughs> I, I wish you could see uh, what how it looks inside, but uh, we send you this as well. You can order these uh, through me as well. Uh, this is the small one. Um, it's intended for one to two baths, um, and then we have a medium, and then we have a large, uh, which Nicole likes to call the big boy. Uh, so we have those three. And this uh, particular blend uh, is good for relaxation, stress, and uh, insomnia. We had uh, Marcia used it uh, when I sent her hers, and she said she has uh, insomnia. And so I kind of laughed because I knew what it was for because I usually have my daughter. Sometimes she can get up in the middle of the night, but when she takes this and uses it at night, uh, she sleeps all night. And then she gets up in the morning, she's nice and refreshed and she's not the 16 year old that you're like, go back to bed. <laughs> you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> so that helps with that too. And uh, Marcia was a testament of saying, that she actually slept all night. And when she woke up in the morning, it was time for her to get up and she felt refreshed and ready to go. And she was like, I never sleep at night. And I was like, yes, you need a bucket of this. <laughs> so yeah, you can order these from me. And I like to combine the two, the herbs as well as the bath. Uh, it's really, really good to do it that way. You don't have to, but I recommend it. Um, so yeah, you can get both of those from me. Uh, this will be, this is the first mix of what we have to come. So next year we'll have other mixtures to go with your uh, yoni herbs as well. And then also I would teach you how to uh, use the herbs as an infusion. So not only can you steam with them, you'll be able to make a tea out of them because all the herbs are able to be drunk uh, when you steam them and get ready to use them. And you can also pour the steam mixture into your bath. So it's so many levels of this that it's, it's kind of mind blowing, you know, there's so many ways that you can do this and use this. It just, it's, it's what fits for you and what you, what you recommend to do. I love that. And this, you know, we're, we're around the time right now that it's Christmas and we get each other these gifts where we get each other things like, you know, lotion and all kinds of stuff like that. And what a great gift to give a woman to be able to give her the gift of the spiritual bath, but also the yoni bath. This is stuff that we don't really talk about a lot, but we all have energy that we need to release. And especially what a great gift to give your daughters, you know? Yeah. Um, so Latoya, I know that you've talked about, you teach them how to do this. So when they um, purchase this from you, and if you'll tell them the prices, but when they purchase this from you, do they get a consultation or is it something that you send instructions? Um, usually uh, we talk beforehand uh, about what it is that you're trying to do. Um, and then after I make up your mixture and send it to you, uh, then we turn around and I also send a little card of how to use it and how often to use it. Um, and then we go from there. And then I try to kind of touch base with them after I've known they've done it at least two times, uh, just to see how everything is going. Is it, is it working for you? Um, so yeah, I usually, counsel, consultation is good for me. I like consultation because it gets me to, to knowing who I am trying to help. That's always a good thing for me. I like to know who I'm trying to help and also if it is helping you. Cause that's, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. 
That's amazing. So I love that you include all that. Now y'all are going to flip out when you hear how inexpensive it is. So you're getting a, the consultation, then you get the um, bath salts or whatever, and then they could purchase the vaginal seed. So if you wanted to do that, how much would that run them? Um, the herbs itself will vary in prices depending on what we're using it for. Um, they uh, range from $8 to $25. Um, the bath salts come in three uh, different sizes. So this is our mini and she is $6. And then our medium is $10. And that usually does uh, about three baths, I believe. And then our big boy is 25. And that does between four and five baths. The measurements I usually tell people to use is one fourth to a half a cup. Um, is good enough for one bath. Uh, making sure that the bath is not too hot. It just needs to be just warm enough where you can just get in it. Um, and usually I tell people to let the bath salt sit about five minutes because by that way, it really infuses the tub and the, her the herbs really infuse the water in the tub. And you'll see that because of the rose petals that I have in it, uh, your tub will turn like a little bit of a pink hue uh, once you let it sit for a minute and then get in and do and relax. Those prices are just amazing. And the fact that that comes with a consultation is crazy. That's a great price. So last question, um, how many uses do they get out of the vaginal seam? I know that you don't reuse that, but I mean, as far as the um, container, how many uses do they get out of that? we usually get about four uses out of it. And so that's about a fourth of a cup uh, of herbs. And so um, you'll have the instructions on there, but usually a fourth of a cup uh, in uh, your little bowl, your stainless steel bowl is enough. And so usually um, the container will be about four steams. So that should last you for the month. If you're doing one a week, that'll last you for the month. If you're doing two a week, that'll last you, for, uh, no, if you're doing two a month, that'll last you for the two months. That's amazing. So yeah, if you guys um, are interested in ordering any of those or have any questions for the lovely Latoya, feel free to just private message her and she'll walk you through how to do that. Um, and Latoya, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say, but I just wanted to thank you for giving us this whole hour of your time and really shining a light on this subject that a lot of us are, for some reason, apprehensive to talk about. And I love that we're bringing back these traditions that women have done, women have done for centuries. And yeah. there is a reason why, you know, because it's very, very sacred. And especially, let's say that you are going through trying to heal this trauma and trying to heal these things. Another beautiful thing, you guys know, I can't not talk about crystals. But another beautiful thing that you can do is also incorporate doing these with um, not necessarily doing the steam with the yoni egg, but after you're done, you know, or even before incorporating these yoni eggs that also can help pull out those emotions too. Yeah. So Vic Victoria said, hello, lovelies. I'm late, but I'm here and I love this conversation. Oh, thank you, Victoria. So do you guys have any questions for the lovely Latoya why we still have her? So I'm going to, um, oh, go ahead, Lotus. Can you unmute you? There we go. I had a question as far as women who have are in menopause and stuff. How does that help with that? And There's as you get older, the elasticity, you know, it it messes up. Anyway, go ahead. Um, actually, there are a combination of herbs for that. Um, just because you're going through menopause, don't mean that you have to stop taking care of her. Um, also, there is a herb, uh, black cohosh, that uh, women use that are going through menopause because it helps with the hot flashes. So there's so many things that you can do to help with that transition from one life to the next. Um, yeah, black cohosh is a very, very, very popular herb that women use that are going through menopause. So yeah, you, and you can steam too. You can still steam. What about if you've already been through menopause and like for 
quite a few years and stuff. How you does, can, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, just a little. Um, you can still uh, steam. Even if you've had a hysterectomy, you can still steam. Um, that's good. Um, so it's... Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so even if you've had the hysterectomy, even if you're going through menopause, even if you have already had gone through menopause and you're you're done done, it you can still steam because you still want to take care of her. You still want to keep her tight. You still uh, even. And like I said earlier, it goes past the digest it goes past the wound into the digestive system. And it's so many herbs that help so many other things uh, that we don't even think about. Uh, so yeah, regardless of what stage of life you're in, you can steam. I love that. I love, love, love that. That was beautiful. Does anybody have any other questions for Ms. Latoya? Okay. Well, Latoya, thank you and thank each and every one of you for spending part of your Saturday with us. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Latoya. And I plan on having her back often to talk about this very important subject. Well, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really enjoyed it. So if anybody has any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Loved having you here. Bye, ladies. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye, Latoya. Bye, Loaded. <laughs>